Hey, welcome to your weekend, News Radio 600 Togo. It is San Diego Business Weekend. Sully here. And look who's wandered into the studios. Yeah. Rusty Nail. My uh, television. Partner. I came in to rob the place. I don't know what, uh, you know, this, I'm going to make this mask thing work for me. Have you walked into a uh, have you walked into a place of business with your bandana and a cowboy hat yet? Uh, or maybe like an old uh, western holster? Yeah. Because I, because that's, you know, you do look you do look like a bandito. You have, you have to dress for what you purchase because I bought some uh, jam, seedless raspberry, which is a pain in the neck to find. And is then I bought you? two bottles of Screwball. It's a peanut butter based. Oh, right here, oh, right here in San Diego. I love this stuff. Yeah. It's you need, on you need in two, everything. Okay, a bottle should last you like months. Well, I, I have. Uh, I, they were on sale. You know, <laughs> you, you got to buy two to get the discount. Oh, I so, see. Oh, yeah, uh, I love it. And well, welcome. Uh, Nails is uh, Nails and I do uh, the Big Biz Show nationally, nationwide, mm-hmm. coast to coast, every weeknight. And he decided to come in. And why are you here again? Well, what? you know, we're you know, I love KOSI, and I'm here to plug a little show. Well, this is Kogo. I know. On now. I don't care anymore. <laughs> They're all blending together. K something. Um, K- K- I- oh, you're talking about our on the air show, the TV show with us and little Tommy. Yes, and, tonight and, at tonight. 5 p.m. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I could have called you. I didn't have to come in. Uh, no, but here's uh, here's our little Twitter thing. And uh, tonight it's it's a rebroadcast, uh, and it was. Filmed or whatever prior prior right. to the stay six feet away. Yeah, be, uh, yeah, because we and it's got, with Mark Mathis, so I'm here to that'll just be, that'll be great. Huh? Is that yeah, it's, it's a fantastic yeah. show. I think yeah. we've got Mark Mathis, and I don't remember the other guests. Uh, it's a radio could, personality. Is like, it Frankie V? Frankie V. I think maybe we've had some great guests. Frankie V from 93. The yeah. chicken we had. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's I'm here to well, plug good. that gig right. five to six. It may still say Pawn Stars. <laughs> On oh you mean on, on the, the menu on the menu for when you for want to KUSI, tape it yeah but no it's a, have it's you watched a, us on TV yet you know I did a couple times because I like the uh, I like our guests I don't like seeing yeah. me I did the first one but I for, I've, I keep forgetting really? to watch it binge it yeah. what else are you doing get some screwball exactly and binge right. it yeah, there's my tip yeah that's exactly right <laughs> all right hey, I gotta uh, go. the, no you stay here for a minute no, okay. Christine Augustine's coming she, she, she's a regular guest with. Uh, with uh, Big Biz Show. She's also a UBS Financial, RKG Wealth Management, uh, and of course joins us here almost every weekend that we can get her. Christina, uh, thank you for swinging by today. Gentlemen, thanks for having me. Nice to talk to you both. Look wow, at she, uh, she uh, called uh, us gentlemen. Yeah. Well, this is, she's been, she, she found the screwball early. <laughs> <laughs> that's, exa- that's exactly right. Hey, so look, this is really interesting, and I was going to start the show with this, but uh, Russ, caved us in here so i'm just going to start the show with you and tell you this um look second quarter economic figures are going to be dismal uh most aren't going to be available until july but i did a recap i don't know if you heard me on kogo this week uh christina but i did a recap and this is interesting after hitting a closing high on february 12th the dow jones industrial average plummeted 37 percent oh through march 23rd okay followed by a 29 percent rally through april 14th this week the Dow Jones is down for the last 12 months, only 9%. Oh. Now, this, it gets better because after hitting a closing high on February 19th, the S&P skidded 34% Ooh. through March 23rd. Then it rallied 27%. Do you realize for the last 12 months that the S&P is only down 2% I was just gonna say for that. the last year? And then this is the big one. Mm. NASDAQ, after hitting its closing high on February 19th, then skidded 30%. But after a 24% rally through the beginning of this week, Dow, I beg your pardon, NASDAQ is up. Here we go. 8%. That's incredible. 8% for the year. Isn't that amazing how <laughs> badly these things feel? Uh, you know, it, it, but if you, you know, as things are crashing, if you've got the stomach for it, like you've been telling us, the, you know, and I think Russ even said one smart thing on our show at one point. He said, if you, if you sell at the bottom, all you're doing is locking in your losses. You're done. Isn't, that, isn't this such a great example of what you talk about all the time, Christina? Exactly. I think if, if that move down in March was characterized by fear, um, you know, April has been characterized by hope, and the moves have been dramatic. Volatil- volatility is still really high. We're seeing big moves, uh, you know, intraday in both directions. But um, absolutely, and our, our House View monthly letter is titled Looking Past the Peak, referencing, you know, the peak of the infection rate that we're seeing mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, moving across the, the 
globe in the country. And I think that's what the markets are doing. They're already looking beyond all the negative economic data, uh, looking towards the recovery right now. Well, for so the big question is, and, and, I, and I, I never ask you about individual stocks because I know you're not going to answer me. <laughs> Come on. But, but I know I'd like that's to. True. But but it's But you have to think about this. Uh, do you think – I sort of think we're going to test another low. I think we have to, technically speaking. But what do you – I mean, do you think that – are you comfortable yet? I mean, I'm telling people if you want to get in the stock market, buy, you know, exchange-traded funds. Do stuff like QQQ and SPY. What I want to know is do you think the worst is over in the stock market or is, is it anybody's guess at this point? I personally don't think that the worst is over. Um, it, it is anybody's guess, I guess. I think that there's still, we've only just started earnings season, and this is for, you know, the first quarter. We're not even, we don't have any visibility on what the second quarter, which we're living in right now, is going to look like, you know, a couple months from now. The numbers are going to be horrendous. Yeah. And I think when people realize how bad the numbers are and how long it's going to take us to get back to the numbers you were just referencing from February or even 2019, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see another move down in the markets. So, uh, but oftentimes markets bake in uh, ahead of time some of the bad news. And I think when we saw this this week, uh, and that was a, I mean, that was a big one, when you saw another 5.25 million workers losing their jobs uh, applying for unemployment benefits, that puts our unemployment rate at a staggering 15 percent, the highest level since the Great Re Great Recession, or Great Depression, I should say. Yet the markets went up yesterday, uh, slightly, and they went up, and they went even big earlier. I mean, that doesn't that just tell you that we've already kind of taken into consideration? Or do you think these numbers are just going to be a sobering reminder going forward that things are not uh, as, as great as we thought they should be? I think it's like they tell you the, the stock market is not the economy, right? There's some real horrible things happening in our economy right now with people losing jobs and, you know, the speed at which they're able to recover um, employment it remains to be seen. You know, like any big change in, in the stock market or the economy, there's going to be winners and losers. Um, you know, I can't talk about specific names, but certainly I think it's easy to understand why sectors like energy are going to have a long time uh you know, recovering travel, yeah, airlines, oil and, oil ends a week. cruise ships. Oil ends a week in the 18s, 1850 for oil. I mean, what's the last time you filled up your gas it's, tank nails? It was uh, at Costco at 230, exactly. $2.35 for a gallon. It came to like 42 bucks. Yeah, and you thought, and you ridiculous. looked over your shoulder thinking that you did something the, wrong. I did, and the money I'm saving there, I'm spending on just showering. I'm, I'm in the shower like every three hours. I have nothing to do. <laughs> You're sharing in water. Uh, Christina, by the way, uh, they don't say the stock market is not the economy. I say. The stock market. Oh, that's, is not, that's yeah. Can we just write that down, oh, please? Sorry. And for a minute, I that's thought I was right. an AA meeting because I heard staggering, sobering. I'm like, hey, yeah. this is my name is Russ. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, because uh, uh, it is staggering uh, the the amount of people that are pushed out of jobs as a result of this. But you have to remember also, and I'm and I'm and I th I have to assume that you. I mean, you have your clients trained pretty well, but I also have to assume that you are. That you're having to, to do some exp explaining that this is not Lucy. The two well, this is not some <laughs> right. This, is, this isn't 2008. I know it feels like 2008. All right. I mean, it feels like the financial crisis, but it is not the financial crisis. I think that's the big piece of this that people need to understand is that we were on a bullet train, economically speaking. The stock market was singing right along. We closed this thing down on purpose. Right. And for I mean, and, and look at the, and there's some questions on did we overreact? It looks like we may have overreacted a little bit. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, I think so. But, you know, at the end, at the end, uh, I know this is a horribly infectious disease. It sounds like the death rate is going to be less than the normal flu season uh, uh, based upon information yesterday. But right. but, you know, you can't minimize, you know, sort of what uh, health officials and governments have to do now. The question is, Christina, I believe that eventually, and I do think we're going to test some lows here in the stock market as well, I think eventually we're going to see a bottom and then we're going to see a V-shaped recovery in the stock market. But I don't think the economy is going to take a V-shaped recovery because just even here in San Diego, right. you got, what, two-thirds of restaurants are closed, not two-thirds of restaurants are going to open. I mean, if and you, if they're you not going to be full for a while either. A lot of people, even with a mask on, are going to go in like, I'll skip the chowder this Friday. No, that's right. So, uh, so Christina, so in your opinion, talk about the actual economy. I mean, if everybody gave us the, if they, if they, whoever they is, give us the all clear, let's say on May 1st, 
are you walking mm-hmm. out the door shoulder to shoulder at a Padre game on May 2nd? Uh, no, I think it's, you know, that's a really important point that, <clears throat> you know, we're talking now about the different phases. So if normalization is is the next phase for us, how do we get back to levels where economic activity and, and you know, going out of your house and filling up your gas tank is the way that it was, you know, a couple months ago, where our expectation is that could take through the end of 2020 to really kind of normalize. Then once we've normalized, how do we kind of economically recover to get back, uh, you know, stock markets back to levels where they were? That could take an additional year. Mm. Um, And then, you know, on the other side of this, you know, the world is going to look different. I think that all everyone that's had to adjust, uh, like my colleagues and I, to working from home, which I've yeah. never done before, you know, now maybe I don't want to fill up my gas tank as often as I used to. And, and I have much more um, technology that I'm able I to filled use. Up Everything my gas is more tank. digital now. Uh, things have changed. I, I filled up my gas tank for the first time today for like three weeks. Wow. Like, honestly, how's it going? And by the way, you know, and, you know, by the way, Christina, thank you so much for swinging by again. Christina Augustine, UBS Financial, RKG Wealth Management. You know, the, the new normal, I mean, look, at Comic Con got canceled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Comic Con's out the door. Season, Delmar the Racing track. Season's canceled. The, the fair. The fair is canceled. Um, I know, think I'm gonna, hanging on to I'm hanging on to Hess Fest at this point. Yeah, and, and, and summer concert series. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if I'll be able to play music out this year. Well, luckily I suck, so I don't draw that many people. We can so, socially so distance. You can social distance. And so. I've got my Cinco de Mayo pickup lines already. I'm Corona free. Would you like the free Corona? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's San Diego Business Weekend. Rusty Nails is going to join me here today. I don't know how long you're going to stay. Uh, we have, but we have coming up in just a second, Jim Flores from the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank going to join us here to talk about. I think he's out actually food banking it. food out food yeah. banking it right yeah. now. All right, welcome to your weekend. San Diego Business Weekend is on the air. News Radio 600 Kogo. Oh. Rusty Nails joins us today on News Radio 600 Togo. Yeah. On the San Diego Business Weekend. Welcome right, to the weekend. Go. He's bringing a whole different vibe to the. Uh, Russ and I have been on the air together for 25 years uh, on Big Biz Show. It seems like 45. It does. <laughs> and we got picked up on TV about 12, 13 years ago. So. Yeah. Uh, and now we're doing that little KOSI thing, by the way, tonight. 5 o'clock. Anyway. Yeah, 5 p.m. tonight on the air on KUSI, 5 p.m. Rusty, myself, little Tommy. Uh, and Mark Mathis joins us today, and I believe hey. it's Frankie V, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> That'll be a it's great show. Be. Is it Frank? I don't remember. That's one of them. Because we ha- this is a pre-tape because it was prior to social distancing, so we don't want you to give you guys the wrong impression they were being disrespectful because we were in pretty tight quarters uh, with five people or six people on the set that Right. Day. We were hugging but, uh, and dancing and doing all that. Yeah, exactly right. Fun hey, uh, Monday nights, I host uh, the Right Now programming we're doing here on News Radio 600 Kogo at 8 p.m., uh, where I take your phone calls and comments on the economy. Uh, and it's been a it's been a real pleasure to do that and, and sort of help you guys out. At the same time, um, I'm able to interview some of the captains of industry and some important people in San Diego that are helping out during this COVID crisis. Uh, one such gentleman, Jim Floros, is the president and CEO of the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank, uh, and he joins us here on News Radio 600 Kogo for San Diego Business Weekend. Uh, Jim, thanks for swinging by, and and uh, and congratulations on such a great job that you guys are doing in response to COVID-19. Well, thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, you know, we all signed up for this. It's what we're passionate about and dedicated to, but it's nice to get a compliment here and there. The uh, uh, First of all, talk about uh, what you guys are up to, uh, you know, this week, this weekend, and so on and so forth, because obviously your job is a 24-7 one. And if you look anywhere around town, you can see that there's lines of people still trying to get food. Well, you know, I'm at Grossmont Center right now. We're about uh, halfway through a mass distribution, uh, 1,000 cars, 1,000 families, about 4,000 people. So I'm actually on site right now. So, you know, every 24 hours, this changes. Uh, The one thing we keep reassuring people is that this is what we do for a living. This is what we were doing before the crisis. We we were feeding 350,000 people before the crisis, uh, that number now is probably 600,000 or more. And we're just adjusting on the fly and just trusting in our system and getting a lot of food out in the community. Hey, Jim, where are the locations, where, where are drop-off locations versus versus uh, locations where people can pick up and, and so on and so forth? Is it a floating type of thing or are there, are there static locations across the city? Well, okay, so, you know, if people want to donate food, you know, we don't have a lot of food drives going on. There's a few, but you can always drop off food at our warehouse at Miramar Road uh, or up in Vista on Engineer Road. 
But as far as the uh, even more important side for people who need food, uh, SanDiegoFoodBank.org backslash get help. So we have about 200 distribution sites. Some are monthly, some are weekly. So we update our website every week, and we list all the distribution sites coming that coming week. Yeah. And usually it's about 100, 110 per week. So people put in a zip code, they can find a distribution uh, near their home and get the food they need. Now it says food bank. Can I get a loan of like a dozen eggs? Because I'll bring them back. <laughs> that's not. That's not how it works. Well, not how it works. works. My mother always wanted me to be a bank president, so I guess uh, here I am. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. So how, can I ask you this? How is Sandy responding? You know, I, I was introduced to you through a few friends. Obviously, I've interviewed you a number of times over the years, but, but, but with respect to uh, just community members, uh, you know, I, I sort of feel like we're, we're coming together this time around, uh, which is not surprising. How, what, would you, what kind of grade would you give San Diegans for participating in the food drives and stuff? Uh, a plus. I, it, is, it is emotional for us because, you know, we're a local organization, completely local, been serving this community for over four decades, and, you know, we, we pride ourselves in excellence. And, you know, the secret to good uh, fundraising is you want to build something that people want to support. So people have great confidence in us. We run the food bank like a business. You know, we're very effective. We have 93 cents of every dollar going to program services, and we've developed all these wonderful partnerships. So when this stuff started going down, people were coming to us saying, Jim, what do you need? How can we help? And it was it was pretty emotional for us to see how the, the community is really rallying around their local food bank and really helping us serve the need. Hey, Jim, here's this, what's interesting here is there's always a need because of the homeless situation here in San Diego and the fact of the matter is it's just, a, it's just an expensive place to live. I mean, even with the stimulus checks coming out for $1,200 for individuals, when, you, when, the, when the median rent in San Diego is $1,860 some odd dollars, <laughs> yeah. obviously that stuff doesn't go a long way. Do you attribute you being so busy on both ends because of the fact that people have lost their jobs, so it's even worse than it normally is? I mean, it seems like an obvious question, but I'm wondering if there's people that, that you're seeing that you've never seen before, people that didn't occur to them that there was a food bank that they could rely on. 100%. I mean, you know, before all this, we estimated about one in seven people in San Diego County, about 450,000 people are termed food insecure, and that even includes active duty military, you know, junior enlisted. And now we have people who uh, maybe they're living paycheck to paycheck, or people who are, aren't getting, you know, they're not getting paid. So what, what are the most recent figures? 300, 400,000 people have either been furloughed or laid off. So, you know, we probably have a million people or more in San Diego County that are now facing hardship and are food insecure. And with respect to how it's moving forward to the next step, uh, you know, obviously we, let's say we flip the switch, we're open for business here in San Diego, let's just call Cinco it. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, I know, Russ is, Russ, Na Rusty Nails is saying Cinco de Mayo. So let's just say May 5th, uh, that's our date. But, uh, but that doesn't end the need, does it, Jim? Oh no, I mean, you know, there's gonna be a hangover from this. And then, you know, this is kind of, and you know more about this than I do, but it's tripped uh, the recession that we were all waiting for. You know, we hope there's a strong recovery, but still, you know, we're bracing ourselves for the next year, year and a half. There's still going to be a hangover from this and the recession um, that we're going to face. So a lot of people, those jobs won't be there. Companies are going to go out of business or what have you. So we're bracing ourselves for the long haul. This is absolutely going to be a marathon. Yeah, and, and some of your bigger fundraisers, I've been lucky enough to work, are people gathered at the food bank. We're going in the cooler. We're having drinks. We're having dinner. We're having a lot of people together. How does that change your... Yeah, how do you get your fundraisers yeah. going these times? How are you going to change that? Get all forward? the people. Well, yeah, I, you know, the, the tongue-in-cheek answer is uh, we'll see. Um, yeah. You know, our, our gala was supposed to be April 25th, mm -hmm. and uh, so we are doing an online uh, auction that actually goes live this Saturday, so people can go online and still support us that way. Um, you know, my favorite event of the year is the uh, Blues Festival, which is in September, and we're just hoping that, you know, life will get somewhere back to normal where we can start having events like that. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, we depend on these events. You know to survive. Sure. Well, I think yeah, I think actually, actually I think we're booked. <laughs> I think we're booked at the Blues Festival this year. Yeah. Uh, and then also uh, I will donate the band for your next gala at no charge for you guys. And uh, and that's that, 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 that way you have yeah, a bunch we, of. We want people to actually come to the event and have a good time. Yeah. And then and then uh, yeah you'll you'll get a bunch of Grammy award winning <laughs> guys on stage with you. Hey, listen. Uh, <laughs> how, okay. I've always wanted to ask you this. What is okay? What is the most popular donated item that comes to you? It's got to be jars of peanut butter, Or right? it's a Chef Boy RD, well, ABCs and 123s. Yeah, what is it? Well, it's funny. It's kind of a, a two-sided story because um, my staff makes fun of me. I'm obsessed with peanut butter. 
because <laughs> one thing we know, people who have uh, you know less income, uh, protein and produce tend to be the two things out of reach. Yeah. And so for me, peanut butter, high in protein, kids like it, too expensive for us to buy. So I'm always talking about peanut butter. So we have groups that actually do peanut butter drives for us. So wow, I wow. love my peanut butter. Have okay, I so got a whiskey for you. Yeah, okay, you've been talking about this peanut that's butter whiskey. all whiskey. Does, it, that speaking that does anybody ever bring booze to these things? I mean, yeah. and, and I don't, obviously that's, uh, that's tongue in cheek, but they I do. mean, when they people show up to donate, People sometimes don't know. They're bringing wagons. They're bringing toilet paper. They're bring- Are they bringing booze sometimes that you have to turn away? Very rarely, and I just uh, uh, I neither deny or confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a great of course. He's got a great cabinet okay. in his well, office. Last there. of all, <laughs> last of all, before I let you out of here, and you've been so generous with your time, and of course, my airways are your airways. Anytime you want to come on the air with us, Jim, you tell me, you let me know. Um, because the only time I ever see the guy is at the yeah. state of the city or some city event, and I'm you know I'm yeah. usually. Uh, <laughs> Well, Busy. Uh, I neither can, I neither <laughs> confirm or deny what I'm doing when I'm right, at those right. events. Um, yeah. Much much like Jim, what is the strangest items that you see coming? Here in? we go. I mean, is there? I mean, is there a big case of Vienna sausages back there, or, or, do or they bring like their own uh, pan with foil on it? <laughs> like I we, get that. we had somebody that wanted to give us. They, they said we're going to bring 1,500 uh, peanut butter sandwiches uh, to the uh, warehouse. I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah. It violates like every health code. But I will tell you the uh, strangest thing is people uh, will donate half-eaten jars of peanut butter. Oh my God! Um, I had a, it's something that happened about three or four years ago because I'm always talking about peanut butter. <laughs> so these two mothers heard me on the air uh-huh. about wanting peanut butter, so they showed up at a uh, distribution and they said to me, "We heard you on air last week talking about peanut butter." which I thanked them. And then they said, you know what? And my damn kids, they had to run their finger through every jar of peanut butter. Oh, wow. See, and, and is, is like, it, yeah. That that's, it's yours, right? so yeah that's yours. You know we're going to throw it away. Oh, yeah. my gosh. A five-pack of 7-Up. <laughs> yeah, a five-pack, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a five-pack. I mean, pack. jars of peanut butter, fingerprints. <laughs> Uh, just, you know, sometimes people just aren't uh, thinking that. They think, well, it's still, most of it's still good. Aren't you going to give that out? Uh, no, we're not. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, that's, that's going into the composter. Most right. of it. Jim Floros is on the phone with San Diego Food Bank. Uh, it is the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank, and you can go to San Diegofoodbank.org. Of course, he's the president CEO. Before we let you get out of here, how can we help? What What do you need most of right now? I, I, I'm assuming there's things like masks and disinfecting wipes and stuff. But this is a food bank. So what, what, what are you guys really seeking out, or is it just one come, one all? I need money, need you money. know, uh, really, um, because, you know, I put in a we put in a million dollar food order about two weeks ago. We're already working on our next million dollar food order. Uh, I'm sure there's a third one after that. And one of the cool things about the food bank, we can actually take one dollar and leverage that into five meals. Wow. Uh, so people make a contribution. I don't know a nonprofit that can take a donor dollar that far. Uh, we have a virtual food drive where people can buy food on our behalf. We actually have, we can customize a virtual food drive for any company, any individual, oh, and they get a special link that's just for them who can brand it with their logo, and uh, and they can send it out to their friends, families, colleagues, or what have you. Uh, so we probably have 100 of these specialized virtual food drives going on right now. Oh, that's cool. Call the uh, food bank. Literally, we can set that up in minutes. So basically what you're saying here <laughs> is, no, I mean, honestly. Cash is king. So if someone puts in $200, that's 1,000 meals? Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that's correct. Okay, well, and, and somebody smarter than that, me than figured that out. But yeah. it's because of a combination of things. One, huge volunteer base. You know, we have such a, a huge volunteer army. The value of all that volunteerism is about $2 million of free labor a year. We get those food donations, and then we buy food in huge bulk. We buy these 2,000-pound totes of rice, beans, and oatmeal, repack it in one-pound bag. So before the crisis, I could get 2,000 pounds of pinto beans for 600 bucks. Wow. So Jim, scale, keep up so the good work. Really of a lot of meals. We'll commit to a $500 donation to help feed 2,500 people here, so look for that donation coming up. San Diego Food Bank. Donor. Thanks so much. Jim. Appreciate it, pal. All right. San Diego Business Weekend continues. Rusty Nails, myself. Guys from Belly Up are going to join us in here in a second. And you got to figure all those chefs out of work. Yes, They're exactly. home cooking That's great right. food. That's right. News Radio 600 Coco. Wardrobe. All right, welcome to your weekend. San Diego Business Weekend's on the air. I'm Sully. You can catch me every morning on the 
San Diego Morning News with Ted and LaDonna. And, of course, on Good Morning San Diego over on KUSI Television. And then, of course, uh, Monday nights we do our Right Now programming at 8 p.m. I'll be taking your phone calls and comments this Monday night. Speaking of KUSI, Rusty Nails joins me right now because we have a weekend show also. Yes, we do. We're much better looking on TV than radio. Yeah, we are. So, but, uh, yeah, to Saturday at 5 o'clock. It's, it's happening for a while. The show we're airing tonight was recorded pre-social uh, distancing. distancing. So yeah. we're hugging, dancing, and I think I kissed Mark Mathis. But you'll have to tune in. <laughs> hey, well, basically, what so, are you doing? So on the air, San Diego, <laughs> on the air SD is our hashtag, but on the air... Uh, with uh, Rusty, to little Tommy, and myself, uh, is is basically a radio show for TV. You can actually see how radio is done as we yeah. interview folks. And by the way, this show, cool. San Diego Business Weekend, is also uh, taped for television. So after you listen to us in Southern California here on the weekends, you can also go to the website, kogo.com, keyword Sully, mean producer Lady Mary, puts the TV version up. So you can actually watch us on television yeah. while we're doing this. Um, also, not to mention, Rusty and I do a national TV show every single weekday uh, that's in 110 million broadcast television homes, 150 radio stations in 175 countries called The Big Biz Show. You can go to bigbizshow.com. And, uh, and Click around. Uh, our, I, I had the opportunity to interview Chris Goldsmith, uh, who is the president of the Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach uh, a couple of weeks ago on the Monday night show. Maybe it was this week. I'm not, I, I heard that. And he, and by the way, I, I don't know that I've actually met him face to face, but it seems like everybody I know knows him. They, they are the guys, when my band started getting popular, they gave us an opportunity to play at a local venue. And from there yeah. is the reason we got booked to play Kaboo. We got booked at South by Southwest, which obviously didn't happen this year. We got booked to play stagecoach, which didn't happen this year. <laughs> uh, but honestly, I, I give Chris and his team just the vision because I was just, you know, he saw that I had a bunch of guys that had Grammys uh, that were in the band, and they realized, hey, let's give these guys a chance. Yeah. And they gave us a Sunday night, and then they gave us a Wednesday night, and then we got a Thursday night, and then pretty soon we got uh, popular because of the guys at the belly up. So I owe these guys personally a lot on the music side of things. And I think I owe him a margarita. I think I was in Cabo and something <laughs> happened and I had a drink near him. Yeah. <laughs> well, the point him. is, is that you know, here is a here is a local business that has, you know, local music for forever here in San Diego. It's yeah. a mainstay. And and they're one of they're one of the businesses that's been affected specifically by this COVID virus and also can give us an idea of what life is going to look like after. So joining us here on San Diego Business Weekend uh, via Skype is Chris Goldsmith. Chris Goldsmith, president of the Bill. Chris, how are you, man? Good to talk to you. Doing really good today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, so listen. Uh, you know, as as you know, I'm I'm a huge fan of Belly Up only because you know only it's because the best. It's the best local venue ever, and plus these guys gave me such a great chance. But talk to us about how this has affected you guys. This has been this has been pretty specifically uh, difficult on you and your bartenders, your waiters and waiters, your security people, your sound people, your load in guys. Talk about that a little bit. Well, from a business standpoint, it's really been Armageddon. I mean, there's no other way to, to, to yeah. put it. Um, we have close to 100 employees at the Belly Up, and, you know, most of them have absolutely no work to do because we're out of shows. So um, between the Belly Up and the Music Box, which is the other venue we book out of our office, uh, we've had to reschedule over 100 shows, and, and there's more, you know, we're rescheduling more every day while we try to figure out how far this is going to extend if I'm not mistaken, we were supposed to play there this last Wednesday. Uh, it was a fundraiser. Sure. It was. It was. A, it was. I forgot about that. And I see the poster here, yeah. Cinco de Mayo. Clearly, uh, we're all rooting for that. The <laughs> yeah, day. The Come on back. So, so that's my birthday. Oh, so what? perfect. Well, we'll get together with you either way. We'll just have to social. Right. So, here's my question for you: with with rescheduling these acts and stuff, how are people reacting to that? Or see pe people scratching at the door to buy tickets? Because I know I'm no. scratching at the door to go out. Yeah. I, I have to believe that there's still people that want to buy tickets and go out to a concert venue. Are you seeing success with your with your uh, uh, rescheduling? Um, absolutely. I mean, we're seeing it especially in two places. One is when we have a, a what we would call you know a, a hot show, a show that we would normally do a pre-sale for. Um, we're still doing those pre-sales, and people are still responding um, along normal patterns. And so that's really been one of the beacons of light for us is to see that everybody is looking forward to when this is over. And and those are for shows that are going up. In September and October, and sure. it's just nice to see everybody still think, um, you know, in that way. Um, 
the you know the 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 daily sales um, are not really happening. Like just like oh, let's see what's playing coming up. Right. You know? So we have to really make an announcement and get people's attention mm -hmm. in order for it to work. And the other thing that's really been um, amazing to me is that people are staying with the reschedule. So yeah. if a show reschedules, we're not getting a bunch of people uh, saying, "Hey, we need our money back" or whatever. You know, they're saying, "Yeah, we'll go with you to the next date." And um, you know, that's even when we've had to say a show is postponed and we don't have a new date yet. Mm -hmm. People are hanging on to their tickets and they're going to go when when the show happens. And that's that's really heartwarming to to know that people are 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 staying with their artists and with the venue. Yeah, that's how it goes. Music, they just love it. They're going to go out whenever. Does that create kind of a problem when you reschedule and then, oops, I had someone scheduled for that date, but now i got to reschedule them? Yeah, to that's it. The I mean, their, their team, Chad over there and the oh other guys, God. I mean, you, they got to be busy as heck right now, huh, Chris? Yeah, yeah, we're playing chess for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the, the reason... <laughs> It's, it's, it's not checkers. It's, you know, every move affects three other artists. And um, yeah. so, you know, we're just... But the whole industry has been incredibly um, flexible and innovative and, and really focused on getting things done, which is uh, almost refreshingly sure. different than how it is normally. You know, yeah. Normally, everybody's waiting until the last possible minute to make a decision. Um, getting answers is sometimes difficult. Um, this this whole thing has brought about a real let's get these shows rescheduled let's get things done and yeah. stuff that usually takes like a month is getting done in a day uh, so let's, that, that let me ask you about fire. let me ask you about your employees because as uh, uh, you know we did a we did a fundraiser for for belly up tavern and did a giveaway through our social media and, and it you know it's, it's what we could do but i understand people are stepping up for the waiters and waitresses and bartenders and security guards talk about those efforts and talk about what you guys are also doing because you got some pretty cool stuff going online yeah well we're seeing a, a lot of different things i mean there's been individual contributions and and um you know those have been incredibly appreciated and the other things that we're trying to do are focused on um you know, giving value back to people who give us uh, money, and you know, trying to stay in the in the commerce business, even as we're potentially looking at lower capacity. Um, when we reopen, we will definitely be at a lower capacity. And the, the huge question mark is uh, how long that will go on. Yeah, will it will we be at a lower capacity for two weeks, or will we be uh, at a lower capacity for three or four months? And that has a huge difference on the impact it's going to have on our on our people. Yeah. Um, so for us, the most thing, the most important thing is we're trying to make sure that we have a business to rehire people when they get back. Sure. And also that we create new businesses uh, that we've had in the hopper on the drawing board for a long time and haven't really focused on. But now we're focused. And what a better time, right? Let, let's talk yeah. about let's talk about that because you have some online concerts that are great online uh, talk about what you guys have done because you're one of the first ones in the country to actually offer some online entertainment based mm -hmm. you know through the belly up website talk about that a little bit well thanks it's um you know it's it's focused on downloads of live concerts which is a little bit of a it's almost like vinyl you know i mean downloads yeah. are the new vinyl everybody's streaming now um, what people don't understand about streaming, it does pay the artists, and it's great that Spotify and all these uh, streaming services uh, exist and pay money to the artists, but downloads are much more uh, direct payment to the artist at a much higher rate. If you buy an album, it puts money directly in the artist's pocket. And so we've been doing downloads for a few years, and uh, but we've really ramped it up in the last couple of months. Yeah. And, We've released 20 recordings in the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, and we're getting ready to release another 20 more on May 4th. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're, we're taking, we're kind of opening up this treasure trove of recordings that artists have not really been interested in seeing released previously. But when we go to them and say, hey, in this situation, we're trying to help support the club, we're trying to bring some money back to you. How about just a you know a 90 day license? Let's let's put these shows up for 90 days, and, and a, a lot of them are saying yes. Um, so we're seeing some really great artists: Rufus Wainwright, Mark Broussard, The English Beat, uh, and they're great recordings. And so if you're working out at, at home, or you're going for a walk, or you're sitting around having a cocktail and mm. you kind of miss going out, you put one of these records on, and it's the, the, the sound is great and the vibe is great. Yeah. 
It, uh, it, it, you know, it really is. And, 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 and you can see some really cool stuff on that. Hey, uh, I, I, I have to, by the way, Chris Goldsmith joins us here today on San Diego Business Weekend. I have an idea. It might save him some money. You know how you, uh, sometimes you get a wristband at a concert. How about we start giving out face masks? So you know, we, we, we just ordered... We just ordered Did 300 you? Sully band face masks. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> band, that's the way to do it. Band hey, um, uh, Chris, I got to ask you. You know, so let's say we get the all go on on Cinco de Mayo, and you and I had this conversation earlier in the week. What does that look like these days? I mean, I, I sort of think there's going to be some cautious. I mean, there's I, again, there's going to be people like me scratching at the door to get in there yeah. and watch some live music and to have a drink and, and relax. But I also think it's going to look a little bit differently. And 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 look. Even you have these folks talking about capacity, and talking about uh, uh, you know talking about capacity and talking about um, you, know, you know well we can hold 600 people only have 300 people. The economics don't work on that. I mean, how do you how, what does that look like for us going forward? Well, I think for us we're trying to create ways where the economics will work and reduce capacity, and um, you know without affecting the band as at least as little as possible. I mean, the bands may have to look at taking slightly reduced fees, but the realities of the road are really hard, and some of these bands will choose not to play if we can't pay them their normal. Well, fee. you know what? You always so, have me and Russ, Chris. We're you ready. Always, yeah. <laughs> we're always, coming in. Hey, listen, man, we're out of time. I'm going to have you back because I have to talk. I want to talk to you at AB5 at some point. I, I'm going to make you a regular guest because, you know, he, he is at the tip of the spear of this stuff. Chris Goldsmith, Belly Up Tavern. Coming up next, the mayor of San Diego. It's San Diego Business Weekend. News Radio 600 Coke. Hey, News Radio 600 Kogo, welcome to your weekend, San Diego Business Weekend. Rusty Nails in studio with me. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's exactly. Well, let me let me get let me get through this, please. You can catch me every morning on uh, San Diego Morning News with Ted Ladonna, also on Good Morning San Diego, KUSI Television. Rusty Nails and I do a national television show every day in 110 million TV homes and 150 radio stations in 175 countries. Called yeah. the Big Biz Show. You can go to bigbizshow.com or you can just watch us on your couch. I'm sorry, did you mention the KOSI show that we're Not doing? Not yet. On Monday nights, I host uh, right now, right here on News Radio 600. Oh, Chicago. that's a good show. I'll be taking your calls and comments on everything the economy, and maybe I could talk the mayor into coming back on with me Monday night. And then, of course, tonight yeah. at 5 p.m. on KUSI, that's our a- very own show. Uh, I think this is our seventh episode mm-hmm. of On the Air with Sully, Little Tommy, and Rusty Nail. And it was filmed prior to social distancing. Why are you so? T- why are you so? Because people concerned about that. Because people complain. Like I, I get. I, I need like a hula hoop with some sort of tent over it that I can walk around in. Because some people look at me if I don't have the mask on. Like, ah! well, but the, but your mask consists of a cowboy hat and a bandana. Well, so last time I checked, you look like you're robbing something. Well, I see some people, they got it on backwards. It's like the blue side goes out if you don't <laughs> want to get me sick. The white side goes in. Let's look it up here. Anyway. Um, so, I, yeah, so tonight, so so when you see the show tonight yeah. on KUSI, we're, we're going to be in close quarters. Close. But it's because it was prior. So, no, you are right next to somebody. Right there. I, oh, do you know who it is? I'm it's Lauren in. Finney. Ooh. We have Lauren are Finney on Are you kidding me? Yeah, Lauren Finney. This is my it. favorite Yeah, human. Lauren Finney and Mark <laughs> Mathis. Two yeah. of my favorite humans. Yeah, exactly right. So that's wow. on tonight at 5 p.m. on KUSI. And we're all preparing for the reopening of the bars, Cinco de Mayo, and I have my first pickup line already. Hi, I'm Corona Free. Would you like a free Corona? <laughs> that's usually what I get anyway in my pickup lines. Every day for 23 years. For the Dang, that's a Hey, uh, Mayor Kevin Faulkner joins us here. Uh, Mayor Faulkner, thanks so much for swinging by today. Uh, unfortunately, it's not just you and me. It's Rusty Nails is in studio. So, Love, Kev. Uh, well, it's a bonus there, Sully. Thanks for having me on, my friend. Hey, listen, let's talk uh, real quickly about really interesting things that went on this week. Uh, first of all, with the Small Business uh, Relief Fund, boy, we got a big boost from some uh, private donors, and you sort of pulled the trigger on GoFundMe to let everyone help small business here in San Diego. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we did. I mean, because the need's so great, you know, as, as we've been talking about, Sully, um, like small businesses are the backbone of who we are in our economy in San Diego. We started with uh, six million in economic development funds, um, and that was just from some city and, and federal funding that, that we had had that I expedited to get that out the door ASAP. But but because the need is so great, we said we, we want to open this up to, you know, the, the entire community, the business community, to help their fellow business owners, their small business owners. So we got great folks like Qualcomm that you know stepped up for a hundred thousand. Uh, CalCoast Credit Union, GoFundMe, others. 
the goal is is to continue to grow this effort with with one over each overreaching objective i should say it's how do we keep these small businesses going to the best ability that we can so when we are on the other side of this that we have those businesses that we have that infrastructure uh, for people to get back to work well i'll tell you what's interesting is this sba program this week and this is why it's so important that san diego is doing something like this for small business because thousands of small businesses shut out of the paycheck protection program i can tell you yeah. you know this is a key piece of the stimulus effort 350 billion dollars and as an owner of a small television studio that employs a fair amount of people I've been able to keep my people employed, but it's coming out of my own pocket because, yeah. be, because we had reserves. But at the same time, you're seeing the fact that some of these businesses are being helped, but other small businesses aren't, and, and it's just because of the onslaught of, need, uh, of needs. That's yeah. why the small business relief is so important, Mayor Faulkner. It is, um, and you know, to see the um, and my goal, Sully, is as I think we talked about last week, was to get the, get these dollars out the door now. Um, and so, you know, those checks are arriving. You know, to see some of the emails back from you know so many of these small business owners that are so thankful, and they're going through very very tough times. And so, I, I think the more we can grow this, I will tell you, the generosity of San Diegans continues to just. I mean, it just speaks volumes of who we are as a city, our corporate community, you know, that's stepping up to, to help these smaller businesses. It rep really represents the best of who we are. Um, and it's going to take that um, to, to keep that help up, to keep those lifelines going for us to, you know, get on the other side of this as healthy as we can. I have a, you know, speaking of money, you guys uh, had a really tough job this year with the budget. Oh, my um, God. And, and you announced your budget this, this week, which I was actually pretty impressed with. That, that had to have been a tough one, but you actually figured out a way. Because, look, let me do a little education here. You know, we have three components to our general fund. We've got property taxes. We've got sales taxes, and we've got TOT taxes, otherwise known as, as, as hotel taxes. If you think of those as three faucets going to fill up the bathtub <laughs> with, with water, okay, and then the holes at the bottom of the bathtub are all the expenses. The holes have not decreased, yet two of the three faucets have rusted out. So all we really yeah. have right now is trickling in property taxes, and it's too soon to tell you know, how compliant people have been with that. I, you know, I, I, think we've, I think Dan McAllister's done a pretty good job of getting the message out on that. But talk about that. That's, been a, that's a tough way to have to put a budget together. Well, um, you know, look, we have to do what, what every business is doing. Um, we have to make the, the tough decisions. We have to make the reductions uh, as a city, just like, just like folks out there in the business community. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're right. You hit the nail on the head. Look, our, our budget money doesn't come from Washington, D.C. You know, it comes from our a thriving economy. And when that economy uh, really gets turned off, the revenues that we rely on to help do all the important city services uh, really take a hit very quickly. And so... If you look at those three big revenue sources, which you just said, property tax, you know, sales tax is dropping precipitously, and of course, TOT. You know, so we've never had a month which is where we are now in April. We're going to have zero yeah. TOT. I yeah. mean, it's just astounding. And so, uh, look, you, you face it head on. Um, you, I put it in. You know, we made some. This is the largest deficit that we've had that I'm projecting in terms of 258 million dollars. Um, we're going to update that in the, in the May revise. But look, it's a balanced budget. We're going to make sure that we're making the tough decisions now um, and not try to kick the can down the road. We're going to use some emergency reserves. We're going to be cutting expenses. And we're going to, you know, I announced over 350 budget position reductions. Yeah. Um, and that's tough, but it is, uh, it's what you have to do. There's, some of the services will be impacted, but I really ap approached it from what's our core services that we have to do as a city, police, fire, you know, trash, water, sewer, all of the, that stuff, and ensuring that we protect those services going forward, and we will. So let's talk about let's talk about that TOT and let's talk about getting the place open because look we just heard this week that Comic Con's canceled you know 350 thousand people uh, over the course of three days uh, go to Pride every year I know that you and the first lady support that as well uh, you know you, you, this is big stuff for City of San Diego especially TOT it's not just the fact that we don't have a great event like Pride going on and we don't have a great event like Comic Con going on it, it, what's really the problem here is that you've got 20 larger groups other than that from the cancer researchers to the parking industry to the gaming yeah. operators those are all hotel rooms man those are i mean those are the, those are the things that fill up our coffers during the new normal whenever that is because i do think there's going to be a recovery and i do think it's going to be a, a bit of a hockey stick based upon people's perception of how safe it is how do how do we as a city compete for those tourist dollars now going forward because that's really what's going to drive this bus i think well, look, there's there's no doubt that you know from a from a short term perspective we're, we we're going to feel it, and you know not only economically, a Comic Con is, is huge, uh, Pride as as you mentioned, 
Uh, but just really what it means, uh, you know, th- those are just uh, such a fun and part of the spirit, you know, every summer. Sure. But we were, we are going to get through this, um, and we are going to compete as, as just as we always do with, you know, phenomenal facilities, uh, phenomenal partners, hotels, you know, restaurants, others. I'm putting together a group with um, the county of San Diego, Sully. We're, we're planning on what that strategy to open is now um, and getting some of our – uh, business organizations together. You know, it's going to be done obviously in conjunction with our public health officials. But that planning has begun in terms of what are the appropriate steps that we take, incremental steps, um, as we begin to open up the economy once the health conditions allow it. And so that is something that I'm keenly focused on. I know all San Diegans are focused on. We got to do it right, um, but we will. And you know, I, I can't wait to get started. But I will tell you. Our ability to start that is dependent upon what San Diegans have already been doing, which is following the stay-at-home orders, flattening that curve. We're seeing seeing it flatten in San Diego, uh, and and it's all because San Diegans have really took this seriously, done the right thing. That's going to allow us to get over this sooner rather than later to open up the economy, to, to take those precautions. So. Um, I, I just can't say enough about, about everybody out there and the, the cooperation because that's going to help us get back on our feet a lot sooner. Mayor, Rusty Nails here. Good talk to you. Hey, listen, I see you a lot on TV. Sometimes you got the collar down. Sometimes you got the mask, you know, on. Sometimes it's off, but you're always looking good. But I'm not looking at you as much as the signing person to the corner. Are, are, are they as important as, as, as I think they are because of their, again, the sign language, their, their, their expressions have to be there. But uh, yeah. how do you like that? Yeah, that? That girl's doing a great job. I mean, I have to say. No, you know, hey, Rusty, I'm, 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 thank you for mentioning that. And, and, you know, just this last week, it was, uh, I think it was Wednesday, it was uh, American Sign Language Day. And I gave a shout out to all of them, not only for what they're doing here, you know, city of San Diego, the county, but across the country. It's in times like this that um, they absolutely demonstrate how incredibly important they are. That's a tough job, yeah. um, you know, to, to do what they need to do to get that communication out there. But uh, as I said, they, they do it with a style um, and, a, and a sense of, you know, purpose. And, and I think just really um, they love being able to help get that message out. And it's, yeah. uh, it's a real, real opportunity. It's hard it. to do. I tried doing it, but I have a little Tourette's, and I, I put in a bad hand gesture every <laughs> yeah, so often. That's, that's I was a, fired that's immediately. A, that's a bad sign. <laughs> that's a bad sign. Hey, Mr. Mayor, before I let you out of here, I'm going to give you a chance, as I always do, to, to, to sort of talk to the city of San Diego and, and, and you know, sort of pontificate a little bit here in the next minute or so. Uh, where no, we're standing and such, no, and look, where I we're going. I appreciate that, Sully. And like, like we were just talking about, um, this hasn't been easy. It's not easy. Um, to be, you know, having to, to have our lives change the way that all, it's happened to all of us. Every family is, is feeling this. Um, but, but I can't say enough the, the, the seriousness of the approach of how San Diegans have, have done this, are doing this, makes all the difference in the world. We have not seen the surge, knock on wood, over, you know, our overcapacity of our hospital system. Right. People are, are doing the right thing. That's, we continue that. That is going to get us one step closer to, you know, opening back the economy and the steps that, that are appropriate. And I just, you know, I, I can't say enough. And, and so thank you for getting the word out, all of that. We are all on this together. We, we, I can't wait to get our plans in place um, to open up the economy. We, we can, we will, and we do it a lot faster if we continue to avoid all of the adhere to all the precautions and all the stay at home orders. There he is. Mayor Kevin Falter, thank you so much for once again joining yeah. us here on San Diego Business Weekend. Give me the straight scoop. All right. That does it for us. Chris Janikas, our director. Chris Maddox, our assistant director. Me, produce Lady Mary, back at the uh, Kogo Studios, along with Mike Usher. Rusty Nails. Russ is funny.com because... Russ is fat and bald.com was taken. See you next week.